we're gonna seize the day. We got some crazy games to play today. Game away. Today's video is sponsored in part by GeeksGamers.com. Come join conversations about your favorite films, video games, TV shows, and much more. You can also enter for a chance to win an Xbox One S, so go to GeeksGamers.com to learn more or just click the link in the description below. GeeksGamers.com. Welcome home. Hey gamers, Nick from Game Away here to bring you my review for the Nintendo Switch. After what feels like decades of waiting and greasing up the hype train, Nintendo's answer to a console portable hybrid has finally been released to the population. We'll be taking a look at the pros and cons of the system and how its launch was handled. Let's switch to it! The Switch is Nintendo's seventh home console, arriving four and a half years after the ill-fated Wii U landed in November of 2012. Nintendo is known for designing devices around a wacky idea, whether it be something completely different like their past devices, or a head-scratcher like the entire concept of Wii U. With the Switch, it's bridging the gap between a home console and a handheld. To see that the engineering went as far as cramming the technology of a home console into the form factor of that size is really impressive. I also find it fascinating that a few years prior, former president Satoru Iwata mentioned that the company was combining its console and handheld divisions. This should have tipped us gamers off that they were up to something big, but here we are. Anyway, the Switch's big idea is that it isn't only a home console, it's a portable device that can be plugged into the included dock and converted into a living room console. It has a touch screen, much like any other tablet, along with two detachable Joy-Con controllers that can be used separately for two-player games or when combined, turn into a standard video game controller. Out of the $300 box, you get a few pieces of hardware that are critical to your experiences. Included is the Switch console, AC and HDMI cable, dock station, both left and right Joy-Cons, a Joy-Con grip, and Joy-Con wrist straps. The Joy-Con wrist straps allow for man-handed people like myself to have a better grip when holding the otherwise small controllers. They allow for extended ZL and ZR buttons, so that's a plus. The downside to purchasing a Switch is that it comes with no bundled software. Zelda will be an obvious choice for many, but so far the lineup is a bit slim on the pickings. The device comes with 32 gigs of onboard storage space, which is going to fill up extremely quickly. Physical games on the carts don't install to the hard drive, but if you want to download more than a couple of games from the eShop, you're going to need a microSD card. At its core, it's a mini tablet with a 6.2 inch touchscreen. You could, in theory, use this by itself to play touch-only games, although none exist right now. The Joy-Cons are two small game controllers that easily slide into grooves on the side of the tablet, turning it into a fully functional traditional game machine, which have joysticks and buttons, of course. Included with the Switch is the dock, which features an HDMI output and a USB Type-C jack for the console. When placed into the dock, the Switch's video output redirects almost instantly to the television the dock is connected to. Powered by a custom NVIDIA Tegra system on a chip, reportedly based on the X1 architecture, which also powers the NVIDIA Shield, the Switch isn't going to beat, say, the PS4 Pro in raw specs, but it is more powerful than the Wii U and pretty much every portable gaming machine out there. The result is Nintendo's most powerful device that's packed to the brim. Heck, even the battery takes up half the unit when disassembled. NVIDIA built the Tegra to bring console quality graphics into a portable environment and it mostly succeeds. More on that in a moment though. Let's switch! The Wii U was a bulky, underpowered tablet that could never be used too far away from the space station and had poor third-party support. The system was clearly designed to grab the attention of the original Wii owners and assumed consumers would purchase it. That plan didn't work out, however, Nintendo seems to be starting over from a hardware standpoint. Its screen is just over 6 inches diagonally in a resolution of 1280 by 720p. The pixel density isn't as high as other high-end machines, but it measures at a respectable 236.87 pixels per inch, and the end result is a very bright and very sharp screen. And unlike the Wii U or 3DS, it has a capacitive touch panel, putting it on par with modern tablet devices and phones. 
The system's RAM is about 4 gigs, so games can easily take advantage of the new hardware. However, 0.8 gigs of that is reserved for the Switch's OS. The console can also send a 5.1 surround sound signal via the dock, but only stereo sound when on the go. There is a headphone jack for those that want to use that as well. Beat that, iPhone 7! While you're on mobile, the Switch has a built-in stand that allows you to play the console on a flat surface with ease. When you decide to put your Switch onto the dock, the system immediately outputs to the TV at a resolution of 1920 by 1080p. Near the top of the device, you'll see an opening for heat to disperse. The Switch is actively cooled, and during my play sessions there was no overheating issues even after hours of continuous play. The two main controllers are the Joy-Con left and Joy-Con right. Each controller contains some features that define them in unique ways. The left Joy-Con has a share button that allows any Switch user to take a screenshot of the game which is able to be shared among social media. For those that really like to share gameplay clips, Nintendo has stated that you'll be able to record gameplay in the future update. The right Joy-Con offers a few unique features as well. Armed with an IR sensor, it can detect an object's shape and distance which can potentially be used in other games. I feel this will be a mostly underutilized feature, but it's nice to have options. For you amiibo lovers out there, the right Joy-Con will have an NFC reader. On the bottom houses a home button, which allows the user to switch between menus quickly. Both have an accelerometer and gyroscope sensor, so motion controls are now an option and aren't forced! Hooray for options! HD Rumble, as Nintendo calls it, feels extremely nice. Thanks to the carefully controlled vibrations, your Joy-Con goes from being a cup full of dice to a ticking dial on a save lock. They collectively paint a picture of how Nintendo's designers could creatively use the Joy-Con in the future. Each Joy-Con can be played on its side for one to two players, with a simple button layout that's similar to how a Wii Remote is held. The versatility of the platform is the thing that sets the Switch apart from your tablet, or your Wii U, or your 3DS. This one device can split into two-player Mario Kart machine as easily as it can act as a one-player's dedicated portable Zelda device. Up to eight switches can network with one another, so it's like a LAN party, but, um, wireless. I should mention that the Joy-Con grip is not able to charge the Joy-Cons themselves. Unless a specific Joy-Con charging grip is purchased, the controllers can only be charged on the Switch. Nintendo says the Switch can't get 3-6 hours of gameplay on a battery charge depending on the game. I've been able to get around 3 hours while playing Zelda, but you can possibly get more depending on the game. Let's Switch! A lot remains unknown about the Switch, even now that it's gone on sale. Every day there are questions asked by fans and Nintendo's acting really hush-hush regarding when we're supposed to get new features. Many of its most appealing games, from Splatoon 2 to Super Mario Odyssey to even ARMS, won't be available for months. Even Mario Kart 8, a port of the Wii U game, won't be out until late April. A lot of the Switch's built-in features aren't even operational yet. Some of the features like the virtual console and video capture are coming at an unknown date in the future. And as with any new piece of hardware, it is impossible to say whether the Switch will become popular enough to be a commercial success unlike the Wii U. However, there is a stark difference in the public knowledge between the Wii U and the Switch. Everyone that I've talked to immediately recognizes what a Switch is and how it functions. I cannot say the same about the Wii U. Rarely do I find someone that even knows what it is. The Wii brand is long dead, and I'm excited that Nintendo has finally laid it to rest and moved on. But that's besides the point. I've had a few issues within the OS of the Switch itself, and it seems I'm not the only one. There is a specific issue with linking a Nintendo Network ID and a Nintendo account. The fact that the company hasn't even merged the two is a huge problem. And even right now, adding friends is a pain. Friend codes are back. I'll bet temporarily, and that's one of the only ways you can add your friends. There is no way to add via username as of this review, and Nintendo has until fall to work out the kinks before they start charging 20 to 30 bucks a year for their online services. Some of these issues will hopefully be resolved over the coming weeks, 
others will remain unanswered for months or even years. The Switch is a flawed piece of gaming hardware that isn't like any other gaming system I've owned. It executes its main idea well, but I feel the lack of compelling software in the first few months can be a deal breaker for many, and I don't blame them. In terms of launch titles, some of the major releases of the Switch are just Zelda and Bomberman, to name a few. Maybe even one to Switch, but for $60, I can't really recommend it. Even with the eShop, you have a few more offerings like Snipper Clips or Shovel Knight or Fast RMX, and maybe even I Am Setsuna. Nintendo has stated we are getting more games. Over 80 this year, in fact. But we can't be for sure if there's even more than that until after E3. The online functions of the system at launch seem to be lackluster, since the only games that have online play are Bomberman and Fast RMX. The eShop, Nintendo's version of an app store, is mostly empty. This will undoubtedly improve, but how long it'll take is the question. Nintendo's console operating systems, for a long time, have been very unique in how it interacts with the player. The catchy eShop theme songs, or the way downloaded 3DS games arrived gift-wrapped on your dashboard, or the milling Mii's on your Wada Wada Plaza. The Switch is Nintendo's least unique operating system by far. A functional collection of quiet menus that's completely different than previous devices. With the system's capabilities, everything you do is blazing fast. Load times are near non-existent and will only get better with more software updates. Even with the silence, navigating through menus is a breath of fresh air, huh, Hey, See what I did there? Switch! The Switch interface is nice and snappy, and in that way, it's a significant improvement over the Wii U and 3DS. There's no background music in any of the menus, nor even on the eShop. It's a departure for Nintendo and it's kind of depressing. Hearing no music while navigating an empty menu gives an eerie feeling when you've heard some really catchy tunes in past devices. Nintendo's operating system music has long been a guilty pleasure. Heck, I even use it in my outros. For the OS, the sound effects are limited, but are used enough where it doesn't get too quiet when navigating. The Wii U and 3DS, to a slightly lesser extent, had a peaceful tone like music played while using the system menu. While the eShop loads, an Animal Crossing-esque sound is quick but audible. One of my favorite aspects about the console is when you slide in a Joy-Con onto the rail, you hear the iconic switch click noise. It's so satisfying to hear, and I'll never, ever get enough of that glorious sound. Ah, the age-old question. Should you purchase the Nintendo Switch? Maybe, and good luck. The Nintendo Switch is a solid piece of hardware that delivers an impressive gameplay experience in the small form factor. But a small list of launch games, beyond Zelda and Bomberman, along with barely any features, leaves the Switch feeling more like a blank slate on unfulfilled potential on day one. Likely some of these will be solved in the future, but I know one thing's for sure, I really, really love that clicking sound. Click. 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 Hey, thank you for watching my review of the Nintendo Switch. If you like what you saw, go ahead and give it a like or a dislike if you absolutely hated it. And I want to give a special shout out to my good friend, WilliamGamer55. Without him, this review probably wouldn't be possible. Go check him out on his channel, WilliamGamer55. I love you, man. I love you, Will. Make sweet love to me. Ooh. Ooh, yes.